Grüß, uh, willkommen in einem and in our Fregens video. Welcome to another exciting video, in this case part 52 of my figure gaming hobby series of videos. In this case, I'll be discussing using 172 scale plastic figures for your figure games. My initial exposure to figure gaming was when my cousin got me to purchase some Airfix German infantry, so he had an opponent for his British infantry using a homegrown set of rules which used flipping, the co flipping of coins. After that experience I was hooked and I quickly built, built up a large collection of Airfix 172 scale infantry as well as Airfix tanks and Airfix aircraft. While I did spend many years using homegrown rules with my Airfix figures, eventually I moved on to board gaming and later led figures for my figure gaming. Where my collection is now, I have no idea. I suspect deep in a rubbish tip somewhere, which is a real shame. While I may have abandoned the old 172 scale plastic model concept many years ago, these days I've been thinking about the idea of using 172 scale plastic figures a lot. The primary driver was an interest in building up a US Civil War force mix, and while I could go down the traditional path of 15 or 6 mil metal figures, I wanted to try something different. Initially I looked at the 13.5 mil Warlord plastic figures, and I must admit they do look good, and I suspect that is the path I will end up taking, but I did decide to do some research on 172 scale figures as well. For those interested, 172 scale figures, assuming the average height of a soldier was 180 centimetres, would be considered as 25mm. However, when you compare them against 25mm figures, they can often look small. So I'd probably not mix and match metal figures with 172 scale plastic figures, but this does depend on the manufacturers. On the other hand, this chart seems to imply that 172 is 24mm. However, the figure here is a World War II infantry figure, and if we go back to the 18th century, the story may change as people were generally shorter. If the average height of a man was 160 centimetres, which may be more reasonable for the 18th century, the scale is about 22 mil, which may explain why they are smaller than many 25 mil metal figure ranges. So as part of my research, let's first look at the availability of 172 scale figures, starting with Airfix figures. When I went looking at the catalogue, I was disappointed to find no ancient Napoleonic or American Civil War figures. And I know they did exist, it's just that they decided not to continue selling them. World War II was covered, and you can use these figures for that scale, but in this video I am initially focusing on Napoleonic, and then later American Civil War. I did find Airfix figures on eBay, but the cost was so high that I decided it was not viable. I thought at this point my search had ended, but then I discovered Itali 172 figures in a hobby short store. While my local hobby store only had a few packets of Italeri figures, the full range is reasonable. Let's look at one of the packets, in this case Austrian Infantry 1798 to 1805. For £10.50 you get 48 infantry figures, which I have to admit is not super cheap. I suppose you could use this to represent line infantry and light infantry. Unfortunately for me, there was no specific Austrian cavalry. You could use cavalry from other nationalities, which may not be perfect, but could get you to the point where you could create a force mix for a game. There was one other Austrian pack, simply called Austrian Infantry. This consists of 47 infantry and one mounted figure, which could give you a commander at least. In the area of command, there was an Austrian and Russian command set which contained adequate figures for any of your commanders. One packet is probably all you need, and you probably get more than you really need. When we move to artillery, there's no specific Austrian artillery, but there were three choices for artillery, two French and one British. Each seemed to contain two guns with crew, which could be foot or horse artillery, although most likely foot artillery. If you were going to go down this path, the best nationalities to select are the French and British, although the Prussians are reasonably covered as well. The Austrians and Russians require using other nationalities troops to fill out your ranks, particularly cavalry and artillery. This is not perfect, but can get you a game. If you're an experienced gamer, this limited range is not going to excite you. However, the purpose of this video is to provide a guideline for new players as one advantage of plastic figures is that you may be able to find them at a local hobby store, and being plastic may be considered more user-friendly for novice gamers. 
Another brand I did find is Zvesta, which may allow you to fill out your range. The number of figures in each packet is only six, but it does appear the quality is incredibly high. However, I suspect the cost is also very high to match the quality. On the other hand, I have to admit they can paint up very nicely indeed, but at $12 US per packet on Amazon, I'm uncertain if this is what new gamers would be particularly interested in. Other suppliers are Kaiser or Caesar and HAT, HET, but Caesar, or Kaiser, depending how you pronounce it, does not seem to have any Napoleonic figures. I could see uh, that, I, that I could see, and I'm uncertain about uh, the HET range. There is an ex excellent site which lists all 172 plastic figures, which is www.howjustoneword.de. I'll leave a link in the notes. For now, let's just stay with Italeri. Okay, we've selected our range and we purchased our first packet of figures. Um, how do you base them? If you're using skirmish rules, then the answer is reasonably simple. Use round bases, which you can see here, which can accommodate your figures, one per figure. I would look at the rules that you are using um, in order to determine the size of the base that you require, but um, I think you can get a rough guide or idea of the kind of base size that you should be looking for here. However, the issue is, let's say you decide you don't want to go down the skirmish path, you want to do something a little bit higher scale, and you're not really certain what rules you're going to be used. How do you base your figures? While I have to be completely honest, this does depend heavily on the rules, um, you should at least plan on ensuring all your bases have the same width if possible. Uh, the depth can vary based on the figure, so cavalry could be deeper than infantry and up artillery the deepest of them all, but as a general rule of thumb, if you want to cover as many rules as possible, try and aim on making sure that the bases are the same width, or at least the same width multiple. The whole topic of basing is a rather wide one, and I've created videos on the history of how it has changed and diverged over the years, but in simple terms, you have the choice of what I call the US system or the UK system. The Age of Eagles rules provides the best view of the US system, although the system did come from an earlier set of rules called Napoleonic Battles, or even earlier than that, Corps Commander. In this case, the base widths do differ based on the trip types, which is not an issue if you're using these rules only, but uh, if you want to use other rules, can potentially be a problem. This shows the basing for the using the US system for 15mm. For our 25mm figures, you could try and fit them on these base sizes, or use a 4cm width as the standard width. This is not a particularly good solution, as it does not really align with any specific set of rules, but is certainly one option. The other basing system, which I'll call the British system, uses a common width of 6cm for infantry and cavalry, but does use a 4cm wide base for artillery. I normally base everything as 6cm wide for simplicity, but as artillery is rare and often not on the front line, this may not be an issue if you start with 4cm or you decide to go down the 6cm path. However, before I drill down into the basing in any more detail, you better define what kind of game you wish to play. Do you wish to reproduce an entire battle? A part of a battle? Or is the game you are interested in more focused on playing the game rather than any kind of history? In my particular case, uh, I want a game which can complete within four to six hours and allows me to reproduce an entire battle, even if the battle is hypothetical. In order to achieve this, each side should have about 50 elements in total. When I say elements, I mean a base with figures on top. There needs to be no more than about 50. Probably, if you want to be a little bit more um, variable, a range between 48 and 52 on the average across the entire game is what I would be aiming at, which lasts, on average, 12 game turns. A minimum size playing area would be 4 by 6 feet, or 120 centimeter by 180 centimeter for figures of this size. This should give you the basic framework which will achieve the four to six hour game that I'm really aiming for. On the other hand, if players want to achieve a different objective, the number of elements and playing area size may vary. But using my example, we have a good objective to aim for. In this case, each side will probably require 200 individual figures, which if we use Atari would require four packets of figures for a total cost of about £42. If we are fielding both sides, we are looking at a possible budget of £84. Oh, sorry, not pound. 
euros, my apologies. We should round this up to 100 euros to cover the extra cost of cavalry, artillery and special figures. The rules that I would be initially thinking of would be for large-scale games such as Nappy Nappy, Volley and Bayonet, Poltamus, Napoleonic Marshal of the Empire or BBNB. Some of these rules are better suited for 6mm but that does give you an idea of the type of rules I would be initially looking for to use with my new plastic 172 scale figures. For this particular exercise, I'm actually going to be using a figure game conversion of a popular SPI board game called Napoleon at War, which I call Gross Schlatten. I've totally rewritten the rules to suit figure gaming and renamed it, but in terms of the basic game system, it mirrors the SPI board game very closely. You could even use it to refight the specific SPI board game scenarios. The general basing system I would use is the DBN basing rules, as the rules I've selected does not really care about basing. As long as all the bases are the same width, it will work. The reason why I'd use the DBN system is to allow me to use these figures for those rules, which would also allow me to use the rules with Snappy Nappy and BBNB, just in case I want to use those figures for those particular rules. It also allows me to use the figures with the old WRG Musket and Pike rules, as well as a wide range of other lower-scaled US UK-centric sets of rules. Basically, I would select a basing system which allows me to use the figures for as many rules as I possibly can. Let's now drill down into the specific base size. This represents the minimum size you should consider, particularly in depth. You could easily increase the depth of any base here to fit the figure on it, or to enhance its aesthetics. You could try a base width of 5cm, which does have its advantages, but then you move into a basing size which few other rules use. Now with uh, Grosche Schlatten, or Napoleon at War, it doesn't matter what the base width is, but nonetheless the objective is to try and select a basing which suits these figures for as many different sets of rules as possible, so I'm not going to consider 5cm width. If you wish to use the US basing, you could adopt a double base depth, as you can see on the left, which DBN does use as well. This base could then be split into two separate bases, as you can see on the right. This structure works with BBNB and Grosse Schleiden, as well as, well, as specifically for line infantry and skirmishers. For light infantry, you would place three figures on each half element. This gives you the US system, which is the one that you see on the right. Let's look at the impact on cavalry and see how that would work. If you're using the double depth infantry bases, you would align the cavalry bases to the same depth at least, as you can see on the left. On the right you can see the half bases. While it's advisable to have all bases the same width, there is no reason why you can't have multiples of bases, thus keeping your cavalry with a width of 6cm. The base width for the game would be 3cm, or it could be 6cm, your choice. If 3cm was selected, the cavalry would simply be double width units. Once again, it does depend on the rules and what looks best. Incidentally, um, I generally base my cavalry 2 to a base. Um, I used to do 3 to a base, and many other people prefer that. Uh, but as you can see here, if you're going to go for half base widths, it probably looks a bit better doing 1 or 2 per base. This is a personal preference. Remember, most rules don't really care what's on the base. You've got to remove your brain away from the figure compared to the actual base. The rules typically at this scale are only interested in the elements. So you can do whatever you think is appropriate on your base in order to meet your particular personal desires or you know preferences. The same basic system that we use with cavalry could be used with artillery. The basing system does give you maximum flexibility to be used with as many different sets of rules as possible, both UK rules or US rules. With UK rules, you simply just join your two half-width bases together and say it's a single base. With US rules, you separate the two and use them as individual bases. Because Grosse Schlatten can use both 6cm wide and 3cm wide elements, I would probably go with the 3cm wide bases. This would allow me, in some ways, to reduce the number of figures I need to purchase. Remembering, now that we've doubled depths, that I have to now purchase double the number of figures to get me the same number of elements. If I go for the half bases, I don't need to worry about this. So we're still back down to the 100 euro um, budget. 
Now it comes to the, um, the difficult area. It's highly unlikely you'll find many opponents with an exact army or force mix that will match yours. So if you're going to go down this path, you need to build up both force mixes. If other players become interested and build up their own force mixes, all the better. However, you need to recruit those players, and unless you have enough figures to show this works for a game, your single army is going to look pretty lonely unless you find some old WRG musket and pike players that have 25 mil figures at your club. As I personally have more Napoleonic force mixes in other scales than I care to consider, I'm not going to pursue the plastic figure path with a Napoleonic army. Instead, I'm going to pursue it with an American Civil War force mix with 172 or, I have to admit, more likely using 13 mil Warlord figures. And so this concludes part 52 of my figure gaming hobby series of videos, in this case building up a plastic 172 scale force mix for Napoleonics and possibly for American Civil War. Incidentally, there are ancient figures as well in this scale, so you could even consider it for ancient. Alle guten Dingen, kommen zu einem Ende.